Good afternoon to everyone. This is our second session of the general anatomy. So we already know that we are discussing in this uh, manner, like important questions we are discussing. Now this session is meant for to discuss the epiphysis of the long one, which is the second question of our session. So let us get started. Okay, coming to the epiphysis of the long bone. First of all, the epiphysis means the ends of the bone. Okay, generally the bone, typical long bone will have two ends and one shaft. Intervening shaft will be present. So, this ends and tips of the bone, which actually ossify from the secondary centers of epiphysis. You can remember like this: the ends are two in number, so they can ossify from the secondary centers. For remembrance, I am saying, and the intervening shaft will ossify from the primary center of ossification. And coming to the types of epiphysis, we generally have three types, but all types are four types pressure epiphysis traction epiphysis atavistic type of epiphysis and aberrant epiphysis let us see in detail about each and every epiphysis the first one is the pressure epiphysis the pressure epiphysis is actually articular we already know that articular means it takes part in the joint formation whatever may be the joint the articular surface will take part in the joint formation and it will takes part in also the transmission of weight also coming to the examples we have head of the femur head of the humerus and lower end of the radius here is the head of the humerus which is in shaded color, uh, shaded portion the head of the humerus will participate in the glenohumeral joint otherwise the shoulder joint so it is articular and it is an example of pressure epiphysis and coming to the second type of epiphysis that is traction epiphysis now traction means the action of pulling over a surface okay that's called traction so the traction is non articular and doesn't take part in the transmission of weight it always provides attachment to one or more tendons which exert a traction on the epiphysis so traction will be exerted on the epiphysis the tra uh, the epiphysis is called traction epiphysis it ossifies later than pressure epiphysis which means the pressure epiphysis will ossify at first and then later on the traction epiphysis will ossify and coming to the examples the trochanters of femur lesser trochanter and greater trochanter of the femur and tubercles two tubercles will be present on the humerus also greater uh, tubercle and the lesser tubercle this all will comes under the traction epiphysis you can remember with a mnemonic that that is three t's uh, one t for the traction another t for the trochanters of femur another t for the tubercles of humerus and coming to the atavistic type of the epiphysis actually one bone will be present let us assume the coracoid process of scapula that is the best example of the atavistic type of epiphysis so the coracoid process was initially an independent bone phylogenetically it was an independent bone but in man it get fused with another bone called scapula and become a part of integral part of the scapula so the example is coracoid process of scapula another example is also present that is called lateral tubercle of talus this is all about three kinds of epiphysis now in this picture we can see the pressure epiphysis which means uh, the head of the humerus an atavistic type of epiphysis that is the coracoid process of uh, scapula and the traction epiphysis here the uh, tubercle of the humerus and coming to the fourth type of epiphysis that is aberrant epiphysis here you should note one point aberrant epiphysis will not present in always uh, it is not always present so the examples are epiphysis at the head of the first metacarpal and base of other metacarpals this is the parts of end long bone we can see the epiphysis which is highlighted that is one end of the bone another end of the bone is also present an intervening shaft the two ends of the bone which are called epiphysis will ossify from the secondary center of ossification the intervening shaft will be ossified from the primary center of ossification okay now these are the pictures which means the, the first picture represents as the upper end of the femur it consists of the head of the femur the head of the femur is example for pressure epiphysis so it is articular no that's why it takes part in joint formation with joint hip joint okay here that is a hip joint and coming to the traction epiphysis the lesser and the greater trochanters of the femur will be examples of traction epiphysis and coming to the aberrant epiphysis here the head of the first metacarpal and base of other metacarpals here the head of first metacarpal is shown in blue color and another one that is last one that is atavistic type of the epiphysis the coracoid process of scapula is very important and another example also that is posterior tubercle of talus it is also called os trigonum this is all about the epiphysis uh, of the long bone so another question is also completed so please like share and subscribe to our channel so that uh, and subscribe please that you get every each and every notification of the video when i upload a new video and comment down in the comment section whatever the topic you want i'll make new video on that and thank you for your support thank you